How did you make that shift in mindset? Well, the, the, the shift was I didn't want to sign up another 100 restaurants. <laughs> like, it was just too hard to keep going out and signing up these restaurants. So we made this um, the shift from if, if we got 100 restaurants and that means X amount of dollars, then signing up another 100 restaurants will mean 2X dollars. That's too hard. If we switch it around and we change to a transaction model where we do online and phone ordering for restaurants, then uh, we, for, we sign up 100 restaurants, and then if we double the number of diners who are using the website, um, then we will double the number of revenue. And we were better at search engine optimization and search engine marketing and building high conversion websites than we were at sales. Mm -hmm. So some of it was playing to our strengths, and some of it was understanding that there was a model that, re that went for, for easier, that, that, that made it easier to sell. Another thing that really amped the sales um, was, and, and sort of we realized was a pivot, was going from a, why charge restaurants a, a fee up front? Why, why, would, why do they have to take the risk on us? Why don't we take the risk on them and say, it's free to sign up. There's no monthly fee. There's no there's setup fee. There's nothing like that. You just pay us if we actually send you orders. We don't make a dime unless you make a dollar. And that, that's what I was going to say is, is by pivoting the model in the way that we did, we really aligned the interest of us and the restaurant. So now everything that Grubhub does, and, and this is true. You can ask anyone who works at Grubhub. We have a monthly meeting where we talk about everything we're doing for the restaurants. And we say, here's what we're doing this month, and this is how it benefits restaurants. And everything is to benefit the restaurants because if the restaurants make more money, we make more money. We're more successful if the restaurants are more successful and the diners are more happy. And so it really puts everything into focus where you don't have to build a bunch of bullshit product that doesn't matter. You know, you just build what's fundamentally important. So you guys did one, I think, the hardest things. I mean, everybody talks about wanting to have a two-sided marketplace. Marketplaces are great. Everybody wants to get paid on transactions. It sounds like a great model, but the road of, of startups is littered with people who tried two-sided marketplaces and died. For every eBay, there are a thousand companies that had some bright idea. They'd be the New York Stock Exchange or NASDAQ of this space. You guys pulled it off. And so for entrepreneurs who are out there thinking about how do you make a two-sided marketplace work? There, I've been in it. We tried, and we became a subscription. We became a SaaS business because we couldn't pull it off. As you take a look at, um, you know, you look back on how did you pull that off? How did you make the chicken egg? I just saw the chicken egg problem of the yeah. two-sided marketplace. What, what was it that made it work? Kind of walk us through how you solved that problem. I, so I'll tell you the, the truth. I think that it's uh, intestinal fortitude is what you have to have to, to win that game. And, you said it. We've been doing this since 2004. I mean, a lot of people are just hearing about Grubhub for the first time now, but it has taken a very long time. And, and Mike, you know, our, our co-co-founder from Philly, um, he's been doing it since the same time frame. Like, it just takes a long time. And the way that we did it was we recognized that in, in, the, uh, in the balance, in the restaurant-diner balance, there's absolutely no rest no value to the restaurants if there's not diners. So we had to get the diners first. But diners don't give a shit unless the restaurants are there. So we went out and, and we collected every menu in the, the areas that we were covering. So in Chicago, we went around on bikes and cars and we picked up every delivery menu and we keyed that data in so that we actually had a, a lush set of data for anyone who is looking at the time in Lakeview for delivery food they could come there and see any restaurant they wanted, whether or not you could order on Grubhub or whether they're paying a subscription fee at the time or not. And I remember when we went to San Francisco in October of 2007, you know, Mike flew out to San Francisco and went around with one of his friends and picked up every pickup and delivery menu in San Francisco. And that's, that's the truth. Oh. And he How came home and... How long did it take and, you to do that? So awesome. the key, one of the key things to remember here is that restaurateurs, they, they understand that their food is the best food that's ever been created. Every single one of them knows this. And, and everyone so they will right. Feed, and, line, the world's and they're greatest right. cup of coffee, and, the world's greatest right. this. And, and so doing the sales, they were feeding me, right? So I wasn't eating ramen noodles. I was eating a lot of pizza and stuff like that. Um, and so this, like, hiking around San Francisco, picking up menus was good for my health because I was eating a lot. So, um, but that's, that's really, I mean, it really, there's something about the transition from, as an entrepreneur, you're willing to do anything do anything to make it, do put any amount of effort into making this product work for your customers, mm -hmm. right? Um, and then you somehow have to transition from that to scale, right? And that's a tough transition to make, but one of the ways we did it is instead of me going by myself, like Matt and I did in Chicago, in San Francisco, I did it, I paid a friend to do it, we had a Craigslister along with us, um, like, uh, so we, hi we hired someone through Craigslister, not someone who worked at Craigslist. Um, so, 
like you, you start to learn sort of these sort of like, you know, automatic is not the only way to scale. Sometimes manual processes scale. And things like this start to occur to you as you're early in this transition process as you're trying to recreate in city number two what we did in city number one. And what Mike just said, though, is one of the really tough transitions an entrepreneur has to make. Because as early, you're not going to have the best suite of software. You're not going to have the, t I mean, the tools we have at our disposal at Grubhub now, both on the diner side, you know, the restaurant side, and the customer service side, three distinct and massive tool sets, you know, we have been building up over years and years and years. So initially, like, we had, uh, you know, tools at, at our disposal that really, you know, I'm not going to say ineffective, but they're... A lot less powerful. Than I wrote them on now. a plane trip. I mean, they're not the. They're Mike not wrote them the one person. Things. Now we have a, yeah. a big team. But you have to go from doing anything for your product and your customers to this scale, and that was a challenge for us. Around you know, I think as we took our second round of funding in 2009, um, we started thinking not in terms of Chicago, San Francisco, Boston, but we started thinking of in terms of five markets, ten markets, mm -hmm. thirteen markets, and, and at thirteen markets, you can't you can't apply the same. TLC to San Francisco as you as you did at two markets. Well, it's got to be a huge. I mean, people talk about differentiation and they think it's something you do on a whiteboard and strategize about. But obviously, you guys put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. It's got to be pretty hard to catch you now. So that's one of our main competitive differentiators is we have the largest network of restaurants. How many restaurants are all menus? Just the menu side. How many restaurants? Wait, so we think about it in two different ways. So we think, you know, now over 14,000 restaurants uh, doing online ordering. And then we have this massive database of over 250,000 menus. So we have, wow. we, as I said earlier, we collect content first to make sure we bring diners in and then we show them how easy and fun it is to order online. Um, and so, so that's the way we think about the business. That's great. I mean, that's a, that's a tough problem to solve. I think there aren't a lot of people who've solved mm -hmm. it. That's really... We're, you know, we're a technology company, and so we're also constantly innovating on that theme of service. So Mike just talked about the systems that we have behind the customer service team, um, which is an example of how we scaled customer service, but you know, it's also a way that we differentiate and, and, and help our service providers provide a higher level of service. We recently invented a, a tablet device similar to, to an iPad. It's actually a repurposed Kindle Fire. Uh, and we call it the order hub, and what it does is it digitally receives and confirms orders on the restaurant side. Um, we actually, years and years ago, pioneered the concept of sending an order via fax machine. Little known fact, uh, the fax machine is actually the preferred method of digital communication uh, in restaurants. I don't know why. They love fax machines. It's in almost every restaurant, and that's life. And so we adapt. So, so, so talk about that for a minute, because I think, sure. you know, we. Most startups fail because they don't achieve product market fit. All these studies say they scale too soon, which is a fancy way of saying they, they didn't figure out the value proposition, right? Mm -hmm. And you never saw a business plan that talked about fax machines that came out in the last 10 years. But sure. so you guys did a great job of figuring out how does your market really work, not in some you know, business school right. on the whiteboard sense, should it work? So talk about how you, you, know, you, built, an, you built an online ordering system via fax. Talk about how you figured that out, because and, 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 I think that's a, a big challenge when people aren't coming from an industry, is really understanding how it works, respecting that, and building your solution around how the industry works instead of trying to make them work your way. Sure. The way we solve problems is we, we try to understand what the core questions are. So in, this, in the case you're talking about, what's the core, what's the core value to the people that are paying us? They're, they're entrepreneurs that own restaurants, and that's orders. So let's do our best job at driving orders. Well, how do we get that order into the restaurant's hands? Well, it's, it's not scalable to call everyone in. So what tools do the restaurants have in the restaurant that are actively being used? And the fax machine turned out to be the platform they liked. And, and it works because this is how they get uh, their food. So they, they fill out an order requisition, they drop in the fax machine, it goes to Cisco or US Foods, and it comes, you know, the driver shows up the next day. This is how they operate. So we said, hey, let's just repurpose their existing hardware, let's send faxes across there, and then here's, here's how we made sure it worked, is we had an automated confirmation call. So we, you know, Mike actually coded up uh, through an open source Asterix platform, a, common, or a, a confirmation call that would play an MP3 that was, you know, Mike's voice saying, you just received a Grubhub order. Yep, like two million restaurateurs orders have heard this, <laughs> right, right. heard me talking, talking to this. Good You're thing like we didn't Mr. have Movie to pay royalties yeah. on that. That's in true. a world where your Grubhub facts just came in. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, but the reason why the reason why that's so critical is we didn't have financing to start. We needed to make money. We, there was no business plan concept that sent orders through a digital device 
in 2004 that was going to work to get me fed, right? So there's a certain amount of like this being close to our customer early on gave us a, a, a customer-centric approach to how we solve problems. What's the problem you have? What's the benefit we can provide? How can we do this in a way that works for you? And the, and the recent innovations, the reasons that we're moving, moving towards a digital device is because we're sending enough orders to restaurants where they would prefer to take it that way. And, and so now that that time has come, it's time for us to do that. Right. 